Hello and welcome back to my channel. In this video today, I'm going to show you how to paint this very ethereal, cloudy space heaven painting. So let's get into it. So the first thing I will say is if you're not using a block that has the edges glued around the entire side of the pad of paper, tape down your paper because we're going to be using a lot of water and getting the entire page wet and it will start to buckle if you don't have it held down in some way. So the first thing I did is I took a wash of blue and starting really dark along the top, I gradually added more water and continued down the paper until the bottom of the paper is a very, very light blue, almost white. And I just continued to go up and down the paper until everything was really even and the gradient was subtle. So now that the paper is dry, I am going to be laying down a really light wash in my first layer of clouds. And this is what's called negative painting. I'm not painting clouds, I'm painting around the clouds. So the clouds are light and we always start with our lightest color and we work up with darks in watercolor. And so I'm painting the darkness around the clouds to give the idea of clouds. Now clouds are really uneven and uh, bumpy and lumpy in lots of different places so this is just a great way to be loose because it doesn't have to be perfect at all. So once you get that light layer down you're going to want to blend everything out. Uh, make sure you have enough pigment so that this next layer above it stands out compared to the really light almost white layer below it. So remember with negative painting, the next layer that we paint is going to be this color that we're painting right now. So for our next layer, we're going to be painting darkness around this layer. So we want this layer, this color, to be significantly different than the lower cloud layer or it just won't stand out. I'm also around the edges while it's still wet, going in with a really uh, just more pigmented wash so that it gives the illusion of shadowing and kind of uh, depth between each cloud layer. Now that that color has dried, we are doing the negative painting for our next cloud layer. So you're going to want to do uh, more pigmented blue than the last color of blue so that again this next layer above it will stand out. And I'm just following the same process as before where I'm kind of really wiggly with my lines because they're clouds and I am feathering everything out doing more pigment towards the line of the cloud for that illusion of shadow. Now we are on to our third layer of clouds and again with negative painting, whenever we do these outlines, it needs to be a darker color than the color from before. So I outline it, I feather it out, I make sure that everything's really even because I want the next layer of cloud to have an even texture, going in and outlining and darkening up certain areas while it's still wet. To get darker colors, you just need to use less water and more pigment lighter colors, you're going to use more water. Now we're on layer four of our clouds. And for this piece, I really wanted the clouds on the end to go up higher and the clouds and kind of to dip in, in the middle. And I wanted to create this kind of really light textural element in the space later on. And so I kept the center as light as I could. So I wanted to kind of frame that with the clouds by the clouds going up on the sides and down in the middle. So you'll see here I do that really distinctly. I really wanted to make sure to continue to outline that. And for this color of blue, I added some Payne's Gray to really get some darkness as well as some quinacridone violet. So I start to add purple and a little bit of pinks to get some more dimension in this kind of more space area because this is our last layer of cloud. So now that we've finished with our last layer of cloud and everything is dry, we're going to start on the space heavenly area. So again, I'm keeping the middle light because I really kind of wanted some kind of a light focus. I'm going to create some textural 
uh, elements there later on too. So keeping the color around the edges, but then also using paper towel to blot out some of the middle still really helps. So now I'm going to continue to add layers and colors, getting this area up at the top really dark. I'm continuing to add pinks and purples, Payne's gray, all different kinds of blue to really get dimension and contrast up here because it adds a lot of interest. Also keeping that middle area light. So when I'm painting over it right here, I'm painting over the entire, you know, upper layer, but the way that I'm able to maintain that lightness in that area is I add more water. So there's less pigment, more water right in the middle so we can maintain that lighter area. Adding darker colors around the perimeter of the lighter area will also help it look lighter. Right here I'm using a dry on dry technique where the background is dry and my paintbrush has paint on it but it's not very wet and that just added a textural layer over the top of that middle light area. So clouds obviously have a lot of dimension, but it's sometimes not very stark. So I'm going through with a light wash on each of these clouds and I'm really keeping areas white, but also adding in these little shadows and then taking my paper towel, kind of dabbing off the starkness of it. So it gives the idea of that depth and the texture without it looking too harsh. I'm going to continue to do that same technique through every cloud layer, but every cloud layer is a different color of blue. So I'm progressively getting my shadow color darker depending on the cloud layer I'm working on. And then again, just continuing to use the paper towel to dab away the harsh lines. I'm adding kind of a purpley shadow along the bottom because I know that there's lots of shadows on clouds, but also I thought it was a nice tribute to the purpley colors I have going on up at the top. I'm continuing to add areas that are darker so that we get a lot of contrast between this space heaven area and these clouds. So this is a mixture of quinacridone violet and Payne's gray right here, just to really get some good dimension and some feathering and texture up into that light area. Now I'm going to be using an old toothbrush head and some white paint to splatter on some stars and planets and all of that. So I'm covering up my clouds because I don't want to get the little star splatters on those beautiful shadows that we've created with the clouds. So I'm using a spare piece of paper to cover that up and going at different angles. Make sure that your star splatters are not just going in one direction and that it all looks even. Some of these little splatters are too big and so before they dry I just kind of take a little dab with paper towel and it mutes them so they kind of just look like light spots which is nice. And now we get to remove the papers to see our beautiful project finished. Thank you so much for being here today, guys. I really enjoyed creating this heavenly space cloud piece for you today. And I really hope you enjoyed it too. If you would like to see more tutorials, follow me here on YouTube. I hope you have a fantastic day.